Welcome, loved ones. Welcome, new subscribers. Thank you, subscribers, for following, sharing, liking our videos, supporting the channel. We love you. We love each and every one of you. You can follow Chemistry on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Uh, my name is Reverend Penelope Stewart, and I'm here to give a book review today. Very exciting book. I'm excited about the book. Um, the book is called Ancestral Magic. You know, you guys, I've been focusing on getting more information about the ancestors. So this is a very, very good book for modern times to really jumpstart. Uh, she goes into more rituals. This is not for anyone. If you just set up your altar and all of that, this book is probably not for you. But if you've already set up your altar and you're ready to, you know, take your ancestral veneration to the next level, because she takes it to the next, she actually takes it to the next level. She actually, when it comes to magic and she breaks everything down, her name is Vivi Gunn, Ancestral Magic. This is a must have. I highly recommend it. I mean, I have some other books here. And I saw some repetitive information in there, but nothing specific on rituals and how to create your own ancestral system. And reading this book made me realize that that's exactly what I'm in the process of doing. I want a system. And she gives it to you. She gives you the system on how to connect them with deities, with their energy. I mean, she, oh my gosh, this is a great book. Uh, let me jump into it. I try not to keep you long, but this book is 136 pages, I think. 136 pages, four chapters, a lot of sections in it, but it's packed. She, this author comes out, she just comes out, she's very forthcoming. She, she doesn't just... Uh, lightly take you into it she just throw, she gives you the information right out and I love this is she gets straight to the point love highly recommended the book uh, she was inspired by brother panic and Bobby Hammett okay she was again she was inspired by brother panic and Bobby Hammett have to get this book have to get it. But let me read you um, the summary on the back. It's called Invoke the Divine Power of Your Ancestors. The power of your ancestors resides within you. The power is yours to access now. This book offers a modern approach to this old age tradition. And everything in here is modern. Like you hear some of the old traditional ways. And that's what I, wa I wanted to approach it in a modern way. And she is on target. You you can follow this book. I mean, she is on target. She gives you a modern solution to um, really taking your ancestral practice. Instead of having it to go to Ifa, instead of having to go through Voodoo and be initiated, she shows, she walks you through it to make synchronize yourself with your own ancestors. She gives you all the material here. And this little book, it's not even that big, but it's it's juicy. It's juicy, and I'm going to share it with you today. Learn how to empower yourself through creative exercises and meditations. Create authentic rituals to feed your ancestors. How to gather the soul primal names of your ancestors to activate their divine power. Access the realm of the ancestors and become more aware of your inner power and so much more. Deep within you lies the collective pain, sorrow, and triumph of of countless ancestors. This primal power is yours to utilize. Vivi Gunn is a creatrix and wordsmith. She spends most of her time conducting occult research and writing. A natural gifted psychic, she performs spiritual readings, uncrossing rituals, Reiki sessions, and magical workshops. I really want to connect with her. Yes. Yes, Vivi Gunn.
So let me dive in here. I'm going to start with the introduction. And this might be a long book review because this book is so juicy. And I want to give you as many of the juicy parts as I can so I can inspire you to go buy the book. Okay? So um, the introduction is, I'm jumping in here now. From a young age, I've always been interested in magic and the occult. I wasn't until I wasn't until I was entered college that I noticed that all my interests in mythology, horror, and the supernatural were all occult topics. I really resonate with that. My newfound interest in the occult was nurtured by great teachers such as Bobby Hemet and Brother Panic. The way in which they spoke about the subject matter with such confidence and ease, it captivated me and touched a primal part of me that belonged to be released. Years later and after tons of research, I created this comprehensive guide on how to access your primal power by diving headfirst into the underworld, the realm of the ancestors. Now you may be thinking, there are tons tons of books on ancestors worship. Why would I need to read your book? And that's a great question. This book does not promote ancestor worship. Many books on the market today spew the same information over and over. And I've seen that even in the old oh, the Hoodoo uh, Bible Magic book. And I think it's another one uh, too. Uh, they, they, they repeat the same information. And I'm just like, I want something new. You're not taking me to the next level in my ancestral veneration. I need, you know, more information. And she provides exactly what I wanted to know in this book. I found what I needed to know in this book in a modern uh, day's pr perspective. Really good book. You've, you're told how to make a basic ancestor altar with a few trinkets, glass of water, some food, and a few favorite things. And that's basically what you get from those books. Once the basic ancestor altar is complete, you're, you petition them to help you solve the same human bullshit that really doesn't mean much in the grand scheme of things and that you can pretty much solve on your own if you just take the time out to do what you really need to do for yourself. This form of ancestor worship veneration is great. I am in no role to judge you for your spiritual practices, but within these pages is an evolved perspective away from the traditional ancestor worship veneration. No longer will you be limited to dated ideologies. Revealed in the pages ahead are methods you can use to discover the ancient names of your beloved ancestors. Summon the power of your ancestors by learning how to craft personal rituals. Open new dimensions of consciousness by communing with your ancestors with an elevated mindset. The depths of the realms you'll reach are limitless. Your ancestors don't have to be remembered for their mundane existence. Know that they are great than any lifetime they, they've experienced. Now is an awesome time to dive deeper into the realm of the ancestors. The lid has been blown open on many forms of spirituality. You are no longer ashamed for exploring different belief systems. Allow this book to expand your view, view of the afterlife. Remove old programming and allow spirits of the underworld to guide you. Countless ancestors populate the underworld and await your descent. Gain knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of the universe and your role within it through communicating with those who know you best. Your ancestors. Ancestral magic is your guide to traverse these forgotten but familiar realms. Allow me, Miss Magic, to be your guide. As she comes right out the back with it, I'm going into another one here. Uh, which one am I going to? Oh, I like when she talks about her experience. She talks about her experience uh, with her brother, her spiritual experiences, and I definitely resonated with all of them. She has one, it's called the Midnight Cravings. One night she got up and she was craving for some food, and she said she didn't know what to get. They had just went grocery shopping. The fridge was full of food, but she didn't know what she wanted, and she saw some bacon grease and some bread. And she thought to fry her bread in some bacon grease. 
And she said her mother walked in when she was eating and she started laughing. She was like, I can't believe you're eating that. Your Uncle Doug used to eat that. And she was like, I don't know why I this was I wanted to eat. I've never eaten this before. I just had a craving for it. And so that's one way our ancestor linked to us too through cravings. If we're wanting something, that's your ancestors, you know, uh, working through you. Uh, this one here I'm going to read is the family reunion when she was really trying to connect with her brother. I think it's very relevant, and I'll uh, expand on it uh, after I read it. So she was reading this book uh, by Robert Moss, and the book was called The Dreamer's Books of the Dead. The words gave, gave me the information and the motivation to try and contact my dearly departed loved ones. I quickly decided that I wanted to talk to my bro older brother, Xander. I followed the instructions stated in the section of Miles', of Miles book titled, Journey to the Departed. Miles instructed that before going to sleep, repeat to yourself that you will visit your dearly departed in, a dream, in the dream world. For a couple of nights before going to bed, I repeated over and over that I wanted to talk to my brother, Xander. The first couple of nights of doing this, Ritual, I didn't remember anything about my dreams. At this point in my life, I didn't remember much of any of my dreams. So not remembering if I had spoken to my brother or not wasn't such a big deal. Still motivated and determined to make contact, I repeated this exercise for three more nights before drifting off to dreamland. On the morning of the fourth day, I finally remember my dream. I was back in my grandmother's old house. The one where I met my papa for the first time. This time I was I was my current age and not a child. There was a cookout going on. My entire family was around. I walked through the house looking at everyone and everything. My mom and all my aunts were in the kitchen cooking. My dad and uncles were on the yard in the yard tending to the grill. My sisters were chilling chilling in the living room, talking. My nieces and nephews were running around the house playing. More family played and talked in the front yard. After looking around, I didn't find my brother, Zan, and I asked around. Everyone said they hadn't seen him. At this point, I felt a little sad because the person I, I'd been working so hard to see again wasn't even here. Just as I ventured into the living room to sit down, my cell phone started to ring. I had no idea I had a cell phone and the caller ID read Zan. I picked up the phone and I heard this voice as clear as ever. I was overjoyed. I heard his voice as clear as ever. I was overjoyed. Finally, I had contact. I had contact and was seeing the fruits of my labor. I asked him where he, where he was and where was he coming to the party. He told me he couldn't make it, make it because he was studying. I asked him what is what is he studying, and he told me the stars. Early in my occult studies, I found the stars equal souls. In ancient cultures, it was believed that the stars are linked to the soul, and I talked about that in Christ consciousness, where ancestors was tracking stars and planets to determine the psychological the uh to determine the cycle the psychology of the people being born and to trace the evolution of consciousness. Okay, I talked about that in my Christ Consciousness book. Famous occultist Alistair Crowley states in his book, The Book of the Law, every man and every woman is a star. Once I awoke uh, from my dream, I knew exactly what Xander was talking about. He was studying his soul, learning various things about himself, his power. After meeting my brother in the dream, the presence of my ancestors became very real for me. The dream experience allowed me to become aware of my constant blessing of ancestors give regularly, offering daily protection and abundance in the form of money and knowledge. I've had numerous experiences that I would love to go into more detail about, but I'm sure you get my point. Your ancestors are here. They've always been here. They've been helping you and will continue to do so. Once you're, you answer their call and become aware of their presence and begin to strengthen your relationship, then that's when you begin to awaken to your true power. Like I said, it's juicy stuff in here. I'm going on. Like I said, I'm not trying to make this video long, but I'm going to hit these hot spots before I let you go, people. 
Okay, I like this one. This is my uh, my favorite one. This section is called You Are God. Love this section, page 18, because this, when I talked about our ancestors were linked to certain deities. I don't know if you, if you watch some of my videos, you've heard me say that. And that's why honoring our ancestors, we should honor them first. And then they will tell us what energies uh, what energies we should link them to or what deity we should link them to. Okay, so let me dive in here. Page 18, it says deities such as Lakshmi, uh, Lakshmi Isis, Lily, Lilith, and many more are energies created by you to catalog and illustrate your primal power. You are nothing more than a same energy frozen in matter, a human body. Your ancestors are attached to the very same energy. The only difference is that your ancestors once occupied a human body, possibly for many lifetimes. Many believe those popular deities to reside in another realm, heaven, traveling to those who call and honor them, what prevents your ancestors from illustrating the same feats. They too reside in another realm, often depicted as heaven. And when they were alive in a physical body, they had the same power to manipulate their reality to their standards. Since death is, is only a transition one plane of one plane between one plane of existence to the next, wouldn't they possess the same power to manipulate events? But but now on an even greater scale, since they have since they are no longer bound to the laws of humanity and this physical dimension. You and your ancestors are more than God. Chaos beings are more fitting to describe your primal power. The afterlife underworld is where your ancestors reside. To descend into the underworld is to tap into your subconscious mind. This is your powerhouse that completes the task of your will. You hold your own destiny and life in your hands. Ancestors, spirits, deities, etc. can be found in the imagination, the realm of your subconscious mind. So I thought that was very... Uh, that was very insightful. Uh, I want to go on. Mm. Now, she talks about building your ancestral deity system. She goes right into that. This is your own deity system. This will be a system that you will be able to follow before I go into this. And to give you more description of it, I, I probably need to read. Let me see, can I find it? She was talking about, I'll just talk about it for a minute. She was talking about her brother loved the car, uh, the color red. And that he, he told her that from now on to associate him with the color maroon. When she see the color maroon, that means that she is, you know, that that's his signature. She knows she's in contact with him. And to connect him with the deity, I think it's Shango, if I'm not uh, mistaken, because I can't find it in here. And so that's how she link him. She links him because he has that same type of energy, too. He has that fiery energy. So she connects his energy to Shango. And so she is synchronized that. And when she, she sees Shanko, she relates that to her ancestor. So now she's now synchronized with that energy and that deity. I hope that made sense to you. But I like the way she broke that down and letting you see the links in that. Because I've talked about that many times. Now it's time to get down to the nitty gritty and begin to craft your own ancestral deity system. We've covered many topics that should put... Put to rest your questions about how you and your ancestors are powerful primal entities. From briefly explaining the concept of death and the afterlife to giving personal examples on how ancestors on the other side can make themselves known to you, to explaining your own magical tools that hold you hold within yourself, breathing life into how and why you and your ancestors are gods in your own right with your own universes. Okay. So she goes into that. Uh, again, I'm trying to wrap it up, you guys. I'm not trying to keep you long. 
I thought this is important. Now, this is very important because when you're working with magic, you have to use your imagination. And there has to be some healing going on on your part for your magic, especially if you're going to be working with the ancestors. It's important to deal with those residual uh, issues, whatever you need to heal. And you've heard me emphasize that. Uh, that's why I have the Know Thyself course because my ancestors pushed me to heal myself. I mean, that's really why I got into this, really, for healing. And um, I found out it goes out, you know, many generations when I started looking at the patterns. So I thought this was important. It is important to remove the, these emotional pockets that hinder you in your life. Due to traumatic experiences, whether they are big or small, if not properly exercised and removed, they can cause grief and mishaps in our lives. No matter how many times you ignore the insult you received as a child from someone, that insult may still play over in your in your head. Awakening an emotion usually negative with the, that experience. Many people hold on to issues revolving around their parents that has caused them to adapt behavior based on trauma. Many men and women hate other men and women due to ill feelings related to one's parents or, adult, or adults. That corresponds with the sex. That corresponds with the sex their anger is directed towards. MEIs create blockages. And I forgot what she said. It's called. It's called uh, what did she call it? Mentally, mentally emotional something she calls it. But that's the short. Mentally emotional images. Mentally emotional images create blockages in the chi, the kundalini energy in parts of our bodies and aura. These blocks create weaknesses in our energy field, allowing other energies to take advantage of this vulnerable spot. Plugging into your energy. We talked about the Whitico. We talked about the witty call the other day. So go back and watch that uh, that book review. We talked about the witty call. Um, vulnerable, let's see, allowing other energy to take advantage of this uh, vulnerable spot, plugging into our energy and allowing the same cycles of trauma to repeat themselves in our life. Thoughts and emotions. Cleansing and balancing your chakras is essential. The vulnerable pockets within your energy fields attract people who will take advantage of these weak spots. And the people that our weak spots attract are usually people who have the same vulnerable spots in their energy. The next time you ask yourself why you seem to attract the same type of people in your life, you must begin to look at your own trauma and flaws in your thinking and your energy field aura. You heard it here, people. You heard it here. Oh, and I, this is why I said she takes it to another level. She takes it to another level. So no longer, she ain't talking about just going to your altar, just putting water and food on there and talking to your ancestors. No, she ain't talking about just playing tarot cards, you know, and you, you, you know, I don't want to say just tarot cards. She's not talking about just using, well, I can say that, you know, throwing bones and or just doing tarot cards at your altar. She takes, she amps it up to another level. You actually have medium. She she certainly shifts my perspective on how I view Ouija boards and how to use Ouija boards. But the way she does it, you know, hey, it, it shifts my perspective on what I thought about Ouija boards. I'm really starting to shift my perspective on that. Because the way she presents it and how she uses it. It says the next form of communication will begin with the Ouija board. Using one will further thrust you into the world of spirit. This method of full-blown spiritual contact will help to ease those doubts that may continue to pop up about the validity of, validity of the spirit, spirit world. Your ancestors and the power of your imagination. You got to tap into the imagination. That's important because that's what you're gonna be using. Because you, you know, your consciousness is creating everything. Everything around you is created by consciousness. Now, before you decide to get your spirit board out, decide which ancestors you are going to contact. Then grab a piece of paper and pen. Write that. Write some questions you want to ask the ancestors you've chosen to talk to. Keep the questions 
short. You want to ask questions that will be val that will validate you are speaking with the right spirit, such as birthday, date of birth, nicknames, favorite food or drink, etc. Build your questions around information that can be verified. You can verify the questions if you know the answers to them, or you can call and talk to a living relative who will know the answers to such questions to get validation. Once you gather your questions, make sure that your environment is cleansed. Go grab the Florida water and spray some in each corner of the room, and a little wouldn't hurt to spray on the Ouija board too. Set up your Ouija board and candle on on a table or on the floor, wherever you are comfortable with. Make sure the room is quiet and free from distractions. Place your spirit board in front of you and the candle, candle out of reach so that you don't bump it. I personally prefer to use my spirit board in the room only illuminated by candlelight, which helps me to get into an alpha state quicker. You can use more than one candle if you're using a board in a dark room. If not, just one candle will do. As a tool to help focus your mind and raise the vibrations of the room, begin to relax and meditate for a bit. You can count your breath or simply slow your breathing. Looking at the candle flame is good too. After a minute or so, you can do a quick aura protection visualization by just imagining yourself with the protective barrier around you and nothing negative can get through this shield. Then call on your spirit guide or holy guardian angel or any spirit ally you've worked with and trust. And so I like that. You, like this is not for beginners. If you're not ready to go to that level, you know, uh, then you probably don't need to get this book. But this book taking you to another level. I'm going to read the conclusion and I'm going to close out. Uh, like I said, I think this book is awesome. I think it's worth getting. Uh, I'm glad I ran up on it. That's certainly going to be working. This going to be doing that work. I got some prayers and stuff in the other book. She got some invocations in here too. To, some awesome invocations for the ancestors and rituals. Awesome in here too. So I'm gathering. I'm, bring, I'm putting my system together. I'm gathering it together. And I think it's almost complete with this book. Uh, I might do some more research and look for some more ancestral book, but I think it's pretty much, I want to try this stuff first before I move forward with anything else. But let me read the conclusion. You know, get this book. If you ready to take your ancestor veneration to the next level, I recommend this book. I really do. I'm trying to find the conclusion, y'all. Uh, maybe it's uh in closing in closing and this is page 120 and there's still some exercises and stuff at the back of the book that's why i couldn't find it um 120 know that within you lies the collective power of all your ancestors deep within you lies the collective pain sorrow triumph of countless ancestors this chaotic power is yours to utilize your dreams and your imaginations are real you heard that your dreams and imagination is real. All of this is nothing but a form of consciousness. Consciousness. It's just more solid than a dream is. But we created all of this collectively, us humans did. When you when contacting your ancestors and receiving information about their primal power, remember this. This is no illusion. Your imagination has the power to create in and everything you desire. You've been hardwired to believe that your dreams and imaginations are fake and ridiculous. And we have. But you know that you've experienced the touch of your ancestors. All the information and messages you are gathering from the afterlife, the world of the dreams, and the realm of imagination is real. I done told y'all that. I done said it so many times. You got to tap into this. You got to know your psychology. You got to get into there. That, you know, you got to get in here. Um, is real. When you make the transition, you will once live as your true primal self along with your ancestors. The primal essence of your soul is expressed in, in dreams and imagination. Your dreams are memories from the real world. 
and what you see, feel, witness in the physical dimension in a dream. Know that you are greater than what you think you are, what you have been programmed to believe you are. You embody creation on all levels. Your potential knows no bounds. It is endless. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this book review. I certainly enjoyed giving it. I enjoyed this entire book. I hope it was insightful and very informative uh, for you loved ones. Thank you for being here with me today. Light, love, namaste, ashe. May the ancestors be with you, loved ones.